Well, this here edition of the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion is brought to you by... Why am I doing it with a really bad accent? I don't know. Uh, it's brought to you by our good friends at Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's serious medicine. And if you're in serious pain, uh, you don't want to wait around. You don't want to have to go to the doctor. You don't want to. You just want the pain to go away, right? Well, that's how I feel. And that's why I use Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream, especially for my legs. I do a lot of running and getting back in that. And for some reason, just it hurts. I guess I'm getting older. And so I use Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream and Back Pain Relief Cream. And it doesn't smell, it doesn't burn, it's not greasy. It's a great product. And it is available everywhere. Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, other great retailers. And you take my word for it. And if you try it out and it doesn't work for you, well, you're silly. It, it should. But if it doesn't, you're that one in a kajillion it doesn't work for. That's okay. You send it back with the empty jar and you will get your money back. The empty jar guarantee is there and it's good. It's a great product. Go to AustralianDream.com to find out more. AustralianDream.com. Or, again, go to your big retailers, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, other great retailers. Go get yourself some Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream and Australian Dream Back Pain Relief Cream. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. That's a direct order. He's been put down, ripped off, cut open. Now... He's unleashed. Unleashed. The American insurgency starts now. And this is Rusty Humphreys Rebellion Radio. Uh, how are you? And welcome. It is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. It is brought to you by Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. Add zombies. And my new book that's coming up pretty soon called Inspire, Engage, and Sell, a copywriter, an insider's guide to copywriting. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that book, which is now available for pre-sale on Amazon. How are you? I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, Mother's Day weekend uh, was uh, just over, and I had a good time. Got to see my mom and dad and brother and everybody else. I went and saw uh, Snatched, the movie, with uh, Goldie Hawn. And Amy Schumer. It was actually pretty funny. Well, not the best, not as good as Trainwrecked, but it was pretty good. So that was the entertainment for the weekend. Other than that, I stayed at home working. Just working. Because I'm trying to create great things for you. Oh, man, the things I'm working on for you, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, it's amazing. I got a new business. I'll tell you about that coming up in a few minutes, too. First, let's get into the monkey business, the crazy business. Did you see Keith Olbermann online? Over the weekend. Of course not. Why would I even ask a, such a stupid question? Of course you wouldn't watch Keith Olbermann online. Nobody does. Keith Olbermann doesn't watch himself. Well, no, I take that back. I was going to say he doesn't watch himself online. No, there's a guy that can't do anything but watch himself. But here's the interesting thing. I am watching, as you are, this complete unhinging of the left. But the media is now getting to the point where it is bordering on sedition. Keith Olbermann is actually calling on foreign governments. Not, let me, not just some. Here's the headline. Keith Olbermann is calling on all foreign governments to overthrow President Trump, claiming that we in America are victims of a coup. Listen to this coo 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 uh, Keith Olbermann here on the Rusty Ivory's Rebellion. I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. I appeal to the intelligence agencies and the governments of what is left of the free world, to them as entities, entireties, as bureaucracies making official decisions, and to the individuals who make decisions of conscience, to GCHQ and MI6 in the UK, to the BND in Germany, the DGSE in France, the ASIS in Australia, and even to the GRU in Russia, where they must already be profoundly aware that they have not merely helped put an amoral cynic in power here, but an uncontrollable one, whose madness is genuine and whose usefulness, even to them, is at an end. To all of them and to the world's journalists, I make this plea. We, the citizens of the United States of America, are the victims of a coup. 
Okay. We need your leaks. Can I stop you just for one second? When did anybody, I mean anybody in America, anybody in the world, think that Keith Olbermann, of all people, was our spokesman? I mean, there's a lot of people I would rather have be spokesman for, for me. Keith Olbermann is not one of them. This it's, Talking about somebody being unhinged, nobody more unhinged than Keith Olbermann. But let's get back. I'll play it for as long as I can take it. So far, I've only made it 49 seconds and have had to interrupt him. So I, it, this his rant is six minutes. Trust me, there's no way I'm going to make six minutes. But well, let's just keep listening to the crazy here. Your information, your intelligence, your recordings, your videos, your conscience. The civilian government and the military of the United States are no longer in the hands of the people, nor in the control of any responsible individuals on whom you can rely. The first step towards compromising our FBI occurred Tuesday with the unilateral firing of its director by the president, prompted by the attorney general, both of whom are, or were at least in theory possibly to be, under investigation by the FBI as led by that director they fired. Uh huh. Our and, CIA and is now, run by. Again, I, you know, if I could use reason and logic and explain away the crazy here, I would. The problem is, is that there is such a double standard. There is such a lie. I can play the clips that go 10, 15, 20 minutes long of Democrats calling for the firing of James Comey. Uh, stuff that that was not even that long ago. I can play it. They don't remember it. It, it. I mean, if you went on national TV and you made a statement, James Comey needs to go, and then a couple weeks later he's gone, could you? And, and <laughs> Keith Olbermann used the word conscience over and over and over again. Do you know that? Could you, in good conscience? Say, oh, I never said that. Oh, James Comey was the greatest guy in the world. Oh, I love that James Comey. Mm, I, he's the bestest. It's just like that uh, loser. And man, I can't stand him. John McCain. Oh, I can't stand, stand John McCain. I mean, if if there's one guy that I, I don't want to say hate. No, I'll use the word hate. If there's one guy I hate above all, it's probably well, Hitler. Okay, Hitler. And then John McCain. Yeah, but he's a, a, a Republican. He's not a Republican. That's the problem. He's, he's a John McCainer. He only cares about himself. Oh, I can't stand John McCain. There was a video I posted the other day. I'm trying to find it. But Facebook is running slow. Have you been to my Facebook page, by the way? Oh, you can see the snake. I almost got killed by a snake yesterday. A big, vicious viper that came to try to bite my head off or a, or a limb or something. And I got it on video, this horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> you, you can go see, you can go see the video of this monster. I, it's a monster. I say it must've been 25 feet long. It probably weighed 700 pounds and it was hungry and looking for lunch. And it was coming after me. Yes, that video available on my Facebook page. Talk to Rusty. Talk that over to Rusty. Oh, how about this one? I'll play this one from my Facebook page. Chuck Schumer, again, uh, as as Keith Olbermann talking about in good conscience, here's uh, Chuck Schumer, October 30th, 2016, talking about James Comey. When I heard about it, I, I, I found it hard to believe that Comey, who I thought had some degree of integrity, would do this. What Comey did, I disrespectfully disagree with my opponent. What he did was appalling, and prosecutors from one end of America to another know it. I think he made a mistake Nancy on Blousey. this, and he clearly has a double standard when it comes to uh, Donald Trump. And these jobs, if you're not in it for a while, you can't take the heat. And I think he just couldn't take the heat from the Republicans. I am so disappointed Harry in Comey. He has let the country down for partisan purposes. And that's why I called him the new G. Edgar Hoover, because I believe that. Do you believe that uh, Jim Comey should resign, Senator Reid? Of course, yes. I'm not challenging uh, Mr. Comey's motivation, but I do think it was uh, unwarranted. It was a mistake. And I think that Republican and Democratic uh, former Justice Department officials have come out and questioned uh, the move that he made. Okay, now you are an intelligent human being. You have to be to be listening to this show. And I appreciate that. You know, again, 
I wouldn't have a problem with all of this had they not come out so strongly in uh, against him earlier. What I don't like is the hypocrisy. What I don't like is the lying. I want what's best for my country. And maybe the Democrats might have something that's not horrible. Maybe the Republicans are wrong sometimes. It's just like John McCain. Why don't I like John McCain? This guy is the guy that's supposed to be Republican. He's supposed to be out there doing what's best for our country. And when he's asked about the firing of James Comey, listen to this lousy answer this guy does. Does it also worry you that this firing came right at the same time as the FBI was investigating CNN, the Trump campaign connections to Russia? I think they've been investigating the Trump campaign's connections with Russia for a long time. I just think that it uh, obviously was not done in an efficient fashion. But <clears throat> when you fire probably, arguably, the most respected person in America, you would better have a very good explanation. And so far, I haven't seen that. The most respected man in America, James Comey. You just heard every Democrat leader come out against James Comey. Now, all of a sudden, they love him. All of a sudden, John McCain loves him. And it's just because they hate Trump so much. And I'm, I've been a little disappointed in Trump lately. And how about Ann Coulter? Did you hear about her lately? She said that she may not be as much of a supporter of Trump anymore. This was in the DailyCaller.com yesterday. And so they said, uh, so there's no wall. Obama's amnesties look like they're here to stay. Do you still trust Trump? And she says, uh, I'm not very happy with what he's had done so far. I guess we have to try to push him to keep his promises but this isn't North Korea, and if he doesn't keep his promises, I'm out. That's why we voted for him. I think everyone who voted for him knew his personality was grotesque. It was the issues. That's why we supported him. I hate to say it, but where's the great negotiations? Where is the bull in the china shop we wanted? The budget that Republicans pushed through was like a practical joke. Did we win anything? And this is the great negotiator, says Ann Coulter. So then the interviewer says... So you said during the election and in the columns that if there's no wall, it's the end of America. And she says, Trump was our last shot. I kind of thought it was Romney. And then lo and behold, uh, like a miracle, Trump comes along. I still believe in Trumpism. I have no regrets for ferociously supporting him. What choice did we have? We had no choice. Yeah, I mean, my fingers are still crossed. It's not like I'm out yet. But boy, things don't look good. I've said to other people, it's as if we're in Chicago and Trump tells us he's going to get us to L.A. in six days. But for the first three days, we're driving towards New York. Yes, it's true. He can still turn around and get us to L.A. in three days. But I'm a little nervous. And I'll be honest, I kind of agree with her on that. We were very clear in why we wanted a Donald Trump. And it wasn't because he was the nicest guy in the world. It was because he was going to be tough. He was going to be the negotiator. He was going to go in and get the tough stuff that people didn't want. Or that the, the, the people did want, that the, that the politicians didn't want. And I'm still hoping for that. But, and, and, then, and then again, you listen to the left, and they're acting like, He's this crazed man going around uh, shooting people and throwing them out of the country as fast as he can. L listen a little bit more to, to the crazy of, uh, of Keith Olbermann here. I, one of that president's political appointees, the first national security advisor was fired and may have been a Russian stooge. The second national security advisor has reportedly been yelled at by the president because he had had the temerity to disagree with him. Okay. I'm really, really getting tired of here in Russia every day by the left with no, and I mean no, proof. None. It's just like they thought of the worst thing they could think of. And and by the way, I kind of find it funny that uh, their boogeyman, we're going to go back to the Russians in the Cold War. It's just that one kind of is, it makes me giggle a little bit, but that's what they've done. It's the Russians in the Cold War, and the Russians are behind everything. And, I mean, Keith Olbermann has no credibility. Let's get this straight. This is a guy that worked for MSNBC, got fired. Then he went and worked for Al Gore and got fired. And now he's working doing video podcasts for GQ magazine, although they're probably paying him a ton of money. 
But I don't know what they get out of this. I mean, he sounds unhinged. Remember the other day I talked about on my podcast. Humor is, the, or hate is the new humor. Hate is the new humor. You are being manipulated by the media. And that's why you don't hear anything good about Trump. Any, any accomplishments he may or may not have, you don't hear them. It's because the media has lost their sense of purpose. Their only purpose is to try to take down this president. You, you don't believe me? Let's hear more from uh, Keith Olbermann. Our State Department is in the hands of useless amateurs. Our United Nations mission is bereft of power and uninformed. And the White House is run by a cabal of an amoral family syndicate that has spent its first three months slapping a dollar sign on anything that stood still long enough. A cabal with, at its head, a man with seemingly no interest in our laws, in our rights, in our constitution, and with a brain that appears to not work properly. I, mean, I, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know what he's talking about. Do you, do you have any any idea what he's talking about? I, I, I don't. It's just, it's crazy. And then another one that was just, again, cuckoo, 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 Chuck Todd, who is supposed to be a journalist, but again, we don't have journalists anymore, except for me. All I care about is the truth. I really don't care about this politics stuff anymore. I'm really losing interest in it. I'm tired of the games I'm tired of it all being rigged for the rich people, and that's on both sides of the aisle. I'm tired of guys like John McCain getting reelected and Nancy Pelosi getting reelected. And heck, even Paul Ryan, always playing games. Stop playing games and do something right for our country. That's all I ask. But listen to Chuck Todd interviewing you know one of the good guys in the administration, Rex Tillerson. He's a guy that has, you know... He could, this guy was making a lot of money before he took this job to make nothing. And listen to Chuck Todd as he basically is insinuating, are you putting Trump before the Constitution? Are you willing to commit to reason to cover up for Donald Trump? That's the insinuation you're going to hear in this interview. Listen to this clip. Did the firing of, sec of, of FBI Director Comey shake your concern about whether how much independence the president will give you not at all chuck i have a I have a great relationship with the president i understand uh, what his objectives are when i'm not clear on what his objectives are we talk about it uh, but i am devoted to uh, helping the president achieve his objectives helping him be successful and i understand i have to earn his confidence every day what's the line between service to the president and service to the country sir wow. for you well, I will never compromise my own values, Chuck, and so uh, that's my only line, is, uh, and my values are those of the country. I did support Donald Trump from the beginning, and we'll see if I was right. I am concerned that he wants to get rid of Steve Bannon and put his son-in-law in this place of power. That concerns me. Because he's a Jew? No. I don't want to see anybody's family getting that cozy. And there's a little bit of that going on. But also, Jared Kushner is no conservative. He's a Democrat. Always has been. He's from New York. You needs, he needs, Donald Trump needs to have people from outside giving him advice. And we'll see what happens. But yeah, I am a little concerned right now. I'm not giving up. I never give up on our country. Ever. We're going to turn around. And, I, and, and our economy is doing great. Heck, big story today. Uh, the front page on the Drudge Report was that uh, the stock market looking good. Again, another another big day of ups. Higher, higher, higher. Market smash records today. Well, that's a big deal, isn't it? S&P and NASDAQ close at record highs after oil and techs rise. Good. Okay, I, I, I like that. Let's, let's, let's build on this. But to be sitting around and wringing our hands and Democrats, you got to get over it. You lost. Okay, I'm sorry. Go back to the ballot box, but, let, but let's get some business done instead of just lying out there just to hear yourself yap. Oh, it drives me nuts. Hey, do you have a business? Advertising has just changed. Changed over the last five decades. It's changed over the past five years. It's changed over the past five months. What hasn't changed is the need to tell your story, to, to deliver it in a way that your customer or buyer can digest 
or understand, and of course, ultimately buy your product or service. And I found the secret to developing that great story and delivering that great story every single time it needs to be told. It's a group called Ad Zombies. Ad Zombies is the world's best flat fee ad copywriting service. That's right, it's flat fee. It's flat fee. Co- flat, flat fee. How about flat fee copywriting? Uh, here's the deal. You can get professionally crafted Facebook ads for as little as $44, ads that will tell your story and they'll deliver results. Founder is a good friend of mine. Seems spanky. He's an award-winning veteran creative writer. He works on brands like M&M's and Budweiser and Frito-Lay. He's done work for Major League Baseball and the NFL and the NBA. And these guys are the real deal. And their ads, they're like gold. So if you need an ad for your business, go to adzombies.com right now. It's A-D-Z-O-M-B-I-E-S.com, adzombies.com. And use the promo code RUSTY. That's me. RUSTY. Do that at checkout. You'll save 20 percent off your first ad ad zombies is the world's best flat fee ad copywriting service ad zombies will bring your ads back to life and they really are great as a matter of fact he's so good he's um, one of the featured interviews in my in my new book yeah it's up on it's, it's very cool i've never written a book before i've been asked to write books before and I wanted to try something a little bit different before I got into like an autobiography. I wanted to kind of do something that was a specialty of mine, but not something that I'm really known for, just, just to kind of get out there and see what it's like. And so I'm in the prog- process of writing a book called Inspire, Engage, and Sell, an Insider's Secrets for Copywriting. And uh, Ken Moskowitz, uh, Spanky, the head guy of Ad Zombies, he's one of the guys I interview, and I interview uh, an expert in uh, writing headlines for websites. And I interview Mark Young, who is an expert in advertising. And I just talked to today a couple of guys who are experts in creating the commercials from the copy. And so you go, well, I don't know. I'm not a copywriter. Well, I don't know. You know, this book is, as it says on my sales page, (laughs) this book is perfect for copywriters and bloggers and entrepreneurs and anyone who wants to understand how to influence and persuade an audience. And so if you want to go check that out, uh, I don't think, I've I've put it on for pre-sales. I think it's going to be released around July 4th. Why? Eh, I like that day. It, it may be done before then, but you can go check that out, and I would sure appreciate your support. You know, these podcasts are, they're hard to get going, and this show has been, have you, and you probably don't look at the charts for podcasts on iTunes, well, believe me, I do, and our podcast has been in the top 200 for weeks, it's been as high in the top uh, 30, top 40 of podcasts and it's because of you and I can't thank you enough. It's so important. And what really helps is what's called social proof. And I'm talking about this in the book. Social proof is a technique. It's a psychological thing that human beings have. And that is when other people like something, we tend to like it too. And so it's... And a lot of salespeople can use this really to their advantage and to your disadvantage. I'm not asking you to do anything uh, underhanded or dirty. I'm asking you to do me a favor, and that is just tell your friends about it. If your friends know that you like this podcast, and boy, we've got some cool things coming up. We're going to be doing this more on video. We're going to have more episodes of the show and more interaction with you. If your friends know that you like the show, they might take a listen to it. And then maybe they'll tell a friend and they'll tell a friend. And don't forget, I've been telling you this as well, Facebook and Twitter and Google have been strangling the reach of conservative blogs and postings and especially podcasts. I And I think the reason why they are strangling us is because they've got some pretty good liberal ones and it's the only media that the liberals have been able to do a pretty good job at getting messages out. And so what 
we need to do is fight back. And so the way we fight back is you tell people about the show and you put it on your Facebook page and you let people know. Like Grand Jones writing about Keith Olbermann. Keith, you are nuts. I can never stand you and the crap you spew. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. <laughs> so anyway, go to my Facebook page, if you would, please. It's Talk to Rusty. Type that in your search bar. It's the number two, Talk to Rusty. Like that. Share that. Make sure it comes up first on your, on your feed, would you please? And go to Amazon and be one of the first people to uh, put a pre-order in for my book. Just type in Rusty Humphreys. It'll pop up. I'd really appreciate it. Is there anything else going on in the news? Oh, just Conan O'Brien's in trouble. It appears, according to a story, this one came out of the Hollywood Reporter, that he's being sued for stealing jokes. I've never been a huge Conan O'Brien fan. I never disliked him. I've just never gone, man, I got to watch Conan. Uh, Just kind of, I don't know. Maybe it's my generation. I don't know. And it's like another the front page of the Hollywood Reporter today. Trump fuels record Saturday Night Live season. I don't know with who. It has been. It's not been funny. There's nothing funny in Saturday Night Live. Oh, I'll take it back. They did have a very funny bit I saw, where it was the uh, Echo Dot Silver. And it's a, do you have you played with Alexa? Have you seen one of those? I have one. I love it. You go, Alexa, what's the temperature? Uh, the temperature is seventy two degrees. Anyway, it's made for, and the bit was it's made for old people. It was very funny. You can find that online. You'll see it. But there's nothing but Alec Baldwin that was funny. Now you, you say, oh, you just hate Alec Baldwin? No, Alec Baldwin on Thirty Rock, very funny, very talented. He had a great range. There's no range. In his Trump impression. There's nothing funny about it. It is just nothing but mean and angry. The first Sean Spicer bit. That was done. That was pretty funny. Now that one's getting old and overdone. So. Anyway. What do I know? Well actually. Actually I kind of know this stuff. And uh, it's just. These things drive me crazy. All right, that's it. We're going to continue to do the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion, and your uh, support is so, so important. Okay, so what do you do? Go to iTunes and subscribe. Put it on your Facebook page. Share it. Let people know. Keep listening. And I promise the shows will be better than this one. Did I, did I bore you a little bit today? Eh, it's been a long weekend. I want to thank our great sponsors. That is Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream and Ad Zombies. Find Australian Dream in any large retailer, Walmart, Walgreens, and other great retailers. Ad Zombies, go to adzombies.com. And coming up very soon, this show will be live on Facebook Live and video. I'll tell you about that and our great partner we're getting into, that and uh, the book. Oh, yeah, the book. It's not done, but you can pre order it. And your support is so appreciated. May God bless you. May God bless America. We'll see you next time right here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. <laughs>